morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the third lecture about uh, core data. So what are we going to do in this uh, class? What we're going to do is uh, to display the information that we stored already in the core data using this class. Remember, we did the same in the previous video, the previous lecture. How do we display it in this table view controller? Now, this table view controller has a class associated with it. It's called contact table view controller. And if you look at this class, really it doesn't have a lot of things in it. All it does is uh, it just displays some dummy records, has number of records, number of sections, number of records is five, and some dummy data displayed over and over again. The last thing it has, it has at the beginning something called search record. That is that alert view controller that you see. So when you run it, and you click on that magnifying glass, the search, that's what you're seeing, that's alert controller. Right now, it doesn't, this has no functions in it, all right? So I'll explain this when we're doing the search. Okay, so now we need to modify this table view controller to get the information from the core data, the, the database. So how we do that? Now I already have some functions available for us in that comment class. So if you open another tab, here's the other tab, and then you have the code data. Uh, we have the, uh, we have the uh, record, uh, the, the code that we need. Now, we're gonna need an array of managed object contacts, so I'm gonna copy this. You can use this one too if you want. And we can, we want to do what? We also want uh, the manage object context. So I'm going to copy these again in the same, in the table view controller, just like we did in that view controller and paste them in here. We're gonna get an error because these guys don't have reference. So what do we need to do? We will do an import. Uh, we will do import core data. All right, so these errors are gone, right? So this is the my manage the object and these are my array, one of them is my arrays of contacts and a, an object that can contain a single uh, contact. All right, let's examine that common method again. And let's take a look at the functions available here. One of the functions here is called get all records. So if you click on that get all records, what does this function do? All right, it, this function gets all the records from a database and returns an array. Now, you can, I'm gonna copy it. Let's copy this function, and then we'll talk about it in the table view controller. So go ahead and do copy this function, which is from the beginning to the end here, and let's put it in the table view controller. And you can put it right after the cell four row. All right, so you can do that. Okay, first, because I defined contacts in the database in this class, I really don't need to return an array. All it does is just you call this and update this array. So I'm not gonna return anything, okay? So you can delete it if you want and delete this statement that says return, okay? All right because we're not returning an array. The reason we're not returning it because I already defined it in the class up here, context, okay? So no need for that return. Okay, what do we do here? First, you create a request. Your table that you're trying to run this query against. When you define a request, you define an as fetch request, what you're returning, you give it the entity name. The entity name, let's make sure I have here contact.entity. Let's go back to the uh, model and make sure we got the right name. Oops, we have here called contacts entity. Again, best way to do it, click on it twice, command copy, you go back to the table view controller, and then just paste it in here just to make sure, all right? Because these are, you avoid errors, uh, and the, the more you do, try, you know, the more things that you do to avoid errors in the coding, it'll help you on the long run, all right? So that is your request. 
a query, a request, whatever you want to call it. Now this request, <coughs> can, when you run it, you can provide to it what we call a predicate. A predicate means a uh, like a query string, where clause, whatever you want to call it. Right now, we're not doing any uh, where clause, just say, give me all the records in the table. Great. So how do we run the query? We run the query by saying do, why do we have do? We have a try and catch error here because this query can fail for any reason. It could be the, the, name, the predicate is wrong, it could be the entity name is wrong, whatever, right? So what we want to do is that we want to say context equal try manage object before we've used save, now we're using fetch. Fetch what? Fetch using that fetch request. I'm running a query against this entity. You got it? What does it give you back? It gives you an array. An array of managed objects. An S managed object. So the possibility, it's either empty, no, no records, or actually records. Now I put this, I left it on purpose here for you. Sometimes you want to do some processing on these things. So I put it in here, it says for contact, in contacts, do something if you want to iterate or go through all the records and do something with them. Now, I don't need it in this scenario, so I'm going to comment it out. Okay? If you wanted to do it, you can do it yourself. All right? So what, it, what is it doing? It says, run this query, give me the array. If, it's error, if there's an error, you print out the error. By the time you execute this query, what you should get? You will get some data or maybe no data. So what we want to do, if we get some data, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say self.tableView, sorry, reload data. What does this function do? This actually give a command to the view control, table view controller to reload all the records because you could potentially add a, add a new record and then not display it. So you need to reload the data, all right? So that's all the function we have. What it does basically it says, give me all the records. Here's my query against this database. Fetch the result and, uh, and if there was no error, reload that data. Okay, let's go on top and take a look at this function. We have the view did load. What I want to do here, I want to do add another function, which is view will appear. Appear. And I'll explain to you why. The view will appear is that it execute after view did load, okay? But every time the view appears, you, it's get executed. Why do we do this? We do this because if we add a record, like let me show you. If we add a record, <clears throat> if we add a record here, and I added the record here, whatever, And when I click on the save, what should happen? When you click on save, it's success. But now when I go back, it should re it should be, this table should be updated. Now, if we did this in the view did load, this screen is already loaded. So that updating of the screen, which refetching the record, does not happen because this get executed once. But the view will appear every time you go out of that screen and come back to it, it will get executed. So that's why I did it this way, all right? So what do you wanna do? We wanna say self dot, do what? Get all records. That's as simple as that. So what happens now? It just every time you get to the screen, it executes this function, which is get all records, fetch the query against its database, and then get 
uh, uh, reload the data. Of course, you can do it smarter, so it doesn't do it all the time, only when you add, it, add the record, so you can have uh, pass information between two classes to say, yeah, I have a new record, or monitor for changes in the database. So it's, it, and this would be beyond the scope of this lecture, okay? So we're just gonna do it simply this way. Every time they appears, go and get the, the uh, data from the database. All right, great. Now let's examine these data. All right, so now this function. This does not return five anymore. What does it return? It returns count, uh, context dot count. All right. How about this guy here anymore? Well, we don't have that anymore. We need to check. I need to get contact equal what? NS or contacts index path dot row. This will give me the contact is my managed object. This is the array of managed objects. So this will give me the contact at that cell. Now in this one, there are <coughs> variables in here. So I have to do <coughs> what? I have to get the values and update these fields. How do we get these values? How do we get the values from this managed object context and update this field? Let me show you one thing here. If we go back to the common method uh, function. Remember there were two functions here. One of them is get put data and get data. We did the put data last time, which does what? It takes the variable names and assign them to where, <clears throat> to the key values in the attributes, uh, in, the, in the entity, the attributes in the entity. Well, the other function that we have, which is get data, it does the opposite. It gets the values from the, uh, the entity and then assign them to uh, fields. Now I can, just simply copy these because I don't need all of them. I just can, I can copy these and use them in my function. So I don't need to the whole function in my other class. So I can just do command copy and then let's go back in here and then paste them in here. All right, these are not defined. So I'm gonna say let, this is not defined. I'm gonna say let. Or you can copy the attribute on top like we did in the previous class. It's up to you, all right? Let and then let, all right? Okay. Now, they're not used, so that's why you got the error. Now, let's take a look. What values are we gonna display? Okay, if I'm gonna say, if I'm gonna display the full name, so I have first name and last name. So if this is gonna be the tables, the uh, text label says, instead of saying hi, I'm gonna make it say first name, and then after that, again, last name. Like this, all right? So that's in the label. <coughs> In the detail, I'm gonna put the phone number. So here I will put phone. In the image, I already have an image here. You notice this one will get the image data from the uh, entity. It's in a data format. So what do I need to do? I need to create an image from this data, and that's what we how we do it. So I don't need the I don't need the email. I'm gonna delete the email. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna put that on top. So I'm just gonna copy this underneath it so you can see, command X. So you see that part close to each other to make more sense. All right. So this will give you the image data 
binary data from the from the uh, entity. This one takes the data and create an image. So now instead of doing this, all I need to do is just say image here, and then it's happy. All right. So for every cell. I get the values from the record after, so this, this one will get, this array will have all the managed objects. I'll get the managed object for a particular cell, get the values, get, uh, get the value for a particular key. These names has to match again, the field names in the database as a string, because they're all string. This one was a data, convert the data into an image, and then update the fields in the label in the table view. So that's all we have to do. Let's see if it works. Hopefully. And if you click on the table view control, if you load the first table view controller, we got the records. Here you are. All right. So now if I add a few more. Uh, whatever. And then you'll see and then do save if i go back it should have that new record in there too okay so that's all voila all right so the next lecture i'll show you how to do uh how to do when you click on this it takes the information and update the screen to do some editing all right and we do the last one, do the, uh, we do the, uh, uh, the search. And then you'll have practically uh, everything you need about uh, core data except the delete. All right, I'll see you on the next video.